patch of gleaming white sand, the modern little city of Santa Cruz still retains the flavor of its historical past. It was on Monterey Bay that one of the early Spanish settlements was made, and even conquest by Russia is included in the turbulent history of the Bay Area. Today, Santa Cruz is a beautifully modern little city. Its city hall, Spanish Gardens, is a perfect example of the progressive spirit of its citizens. Industry is moving to Santa Cruz as well, and all the Wrigley's chewing gum sold is manufactured. The spirit of Main Street America, Santa Cruz remains its quiet streets, its hotels, the easy warmth of living. All these things remind the visitor of another way of life, when mission bells were softened with a golf course for a backyard. But the pride of Santa Cruz is its unmatched beach and blue waters. And the great casino, the Queen of Monterey Bay, found without parallel. Blessing and I knew from the Monterey perfection. That first day in Santa Cruz found us on the boardwalk. And the Santa Cruz boardwalk doesn't have to take a back seat to anyone. Laughter, music, gaiety, and the warm sun and ocean breeze all mingled together, and we weren't the only ones who took advantage of them. A perfect seaside afternoon, and everyone enjoyed it. Well, practically everyone. White Beach offers something for everyone. The whole Pacific Ocean is here for the taking, and there usually are takers of plenty. But there's also the opportunity to lie back on the warm sand and let the sun wash your troubles away. The Santa Cruz Beach is famous all over the country, its clean white sand gently sloping into the warm Pacific waters. A beach for running and laughing. investigation or for just sitting in the warm sun unquestionably Santa Cruz is one of the West's finest ocean playgrounds an amusement zone isn't really a boardwalk at all. And here we found a ride that provides a thrill a second for those who dare the giant dipper. Contrast offers all things to all people. A quiet, rustic home, a retreat from the dizzy pace of modern living. Fishing, real fishing, beside a cool mountain stream where the trout lie waiting. And at the end of an interlude of testing your skill with a hook and line, a visit to one of the most unusual restaurants in all the world, the famous Brookdale Lodge.
We were warned not to miss the lodge, but neither Blessing nor I actually realized what was in store for us as we turned to enter the dining room. Entering the main dining room of the lodge was like entering a shaded glen in the forest. The murmur of a clear mountain stream which flows through the room, the soft sighing of the trees which grow from the floor, these form the luncheon music at Brookdale Lodge. In the past 25 years, more than four million visitors have stopped at the lodge, stopped to look and wonder. Last year alone, guests from 54 foreign countries visited this unique dining room. most interesting and picturesque of Santa Cruz County's industries, lumbering. Busy sawmills dot the forested countryside, for Santa Cruz County is redwood country, and lumbering is of major importance. Giants, a job for men of skill and power. Mills like this, processing trees like these, are responsible for so much of importance to us. The homes we live in, the newspapers and magazines we read. But a lot happens to that tree trunk before it appears on your front porch in the morning with bold headlines splashed across its face. Here is where the magazines grow and the neat modern houses lining the streets of Santa Cruz. A silent cathedral-like forest. Silent save for the hum of saws and the sound of axes biting into ancient wood. Sounds almost lost in the vast. Watched, there was something awe-inspiring to see this century-old giant brought down by a mere man, made to fall exactly where the logger wished. fish-filled Pacific Ocean is at the front door of Santa Cruz, and that's another reason for the city's popularity among vacationers. Offshore, Waltonians catch bluefish, sole, cod, salmon, sea trout, any of a hundred finny varieties. Speedy water taxis ferry the fishermen to the roomy fishing boats offshore, and we couldn't pass up the opportunity to try our luck. The weather was a fisherman's dream, bright, clear, and warm, with a gently rolling sea. We boarded the launch at the Municipal Pier, which stretches its gaily colored arm far out into the sea from the boardwalk. And in a matter of moments, we were on our way through the blue waters, a brisk and exhilarating prelude to several hours of fishing thrills. Most of the year, salmon run off Santa Cruz, and trolling parties leave every day in search of the flashing Silver King of the Sea. 
formerly a sport reserved for the wealthy, at Santa Cruz it's available to everyone. Blessing wanted the picture for the folks at home, and I didn't mind. Not today, anyhow. Like everyone else aboard the fishing boat, our luck had been good. In fact, had it been any better, I'd have had to hire a wheelbarrow. If Santa Cruz offered nothing else, the fishing alone would have made it a favorite holiday spot with us. Ahoy Cafe, one of the wonderful seafood restaurants on Fisherman's Wharf. And then we were off on a drive up the scenic highway which skirts the ocean. Here the Pacific meets the wild coast of California. Glimpsed through the trees which line the cliffs, the blue of the ocean is incredibly brilliant, like a scene painted by an artist who had no control over his colors. But although the sea itself is quiet and calm, the surf and cliffs wage a never-ending war against one another. And this is the result. One of many natural bridges near Swanson Beach State Park hewn out of the solid stone by the endless surge of the surf. The surf that makes a wonderland of the rocky coastline for miles. Surf that beats against miles of lonely beaches, that sings a baritone song throughout the quiet night. Surf that sings a siren song to that familiar phenomenon, the skin diver. Skin diving is excellent here. The water calm, the fish plentiful, and abundance of shellfish. Small wonder so many skin divers come to Santa Cruz from all over the West, and they seldom go home empty-handed. Santa Cruz offers both saltwater swimming on the beaches and freshwater swimming too in the river which flows through town. And when Blessing and I drove by the river and saw the paddle boats, we couldn't resist trying one. Even a nautical dub can navigate a trim craft like this. It's just like riding a bicycle, except that you don't have to worry about balancing it. Paddle boats were a big attraction, particularly with the younger members of Santa Cruz's society, when the moon is full on a wonderful cool evening. One of the attractions high on our must-see list were the begonia gardens at Capitola. So we exchanged the paddle boat for the Plymouth and drove to the nurseries. 99% of the nation's tuberous begonias are grown at these gardens a fact attesting to the mild climate of the Santa Cruz region. And delphiniums, too, grow profusely in Capitola, just a few miles south of Santa Cruz. It's always springtime at the hybridizing gardens.
springtime in unbelievable colors and perfumes. At certain times of the year, the Capitola countryside is a sea of brilliant color, a floral pageant almost beyond compare. But even when the fields are not in bloom, the hothouses are filled with prized blossoms of an astounding size and color. Begonias, delphiniums, calla lilies, primroses, a true... A few short miles on down through peaceful green fields and gently rolling hills, and we were in the agricultural center of Watsonville. And Watsonville to the gourmet means strawberries. Acres and acres of luscious, juicy red berries. Millions of shortcakes in the making. Two, blessings stocked up on Watsonville strawberries, and they were just as good as they looked. Then we pointed the car out of Watsonville, toward our hotel, and a night of rest before the big Miss California pageant scheduled for next day. Each year, Santa Cruz is host to the beauty contest to choose Miss California, a pageant of beauty which always draws a large crowd, and with reason. The most beautiful girls in California vie for the crown and the right to represent the state in the Miss America contest. Held each year for four days in June, Miss California is crowned on the last day on the stand in front of a casino on the beach. We wondered how these girls could look so calm and poised as they paraded before the crowd, wondering which would be chosen Miss California. The judge's decision has been made the night before, but has not been announced. This is the coronation ceremony only, and only one person in the entire group knows who the winner is. Finally, the big moment comes. Suspense mounts as the second and third prize winners are announced. Decisions which meet with approval from all of us. And then, the happiest girl in the state, without a doubt, is beautiful Miss Watsonville, elected Miss California for 1955, queen of a parade of beauty, a parade which started for us when we first entered Santa Cruz County, the county of contrast, wild and peaceful, cosmopolitan and rustic, green and golden, but always beautiful, like Miss California herself.